yourself heading home after a long day at work. You grab a quick snack from the fridge, sit down on the couch, wrap yourself in a warm blanket, turn the TV to your favorite channel, and begin to wind down. Except, now imagine if there wasn't a snack, or a couch, or a blanket, or a TV to come home to at all. Doesn't sound so relaxed anymore, does it? But hey, at least you have a roof over your head, clothes on your back, and shoes on your feet. Right? Now imagine if you did any of that either. Sadly, this is the exact same circumstance for thousands of Americans across the country. America has long faced the issue of homelessness, and the, rec the recent circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic have only made these numbers worse. In the next few minutes, I will be addressing this increased issue of homelessness in the country, why some may experience homelessness, and some ways this deficit issue can be lessened. When people hear the word homeless, oftentimes the image of a poorly groomed person holding a cardboard sign or an empty cup may often come to mind. This is the stereotypical image of what homelessness is, when in reality, it goes much deeper than many people can imagine. Altogether, according to the National Alliance on Homelessness, by the end of 2019, a total of 567,715 American citizens were left with no place to call home. Currently, almost half of the homeless population are individuals living on the streets alone, one third of the homeless are families, one fifth are chronically homeless, meaning they have been homeless for more than a total of 12 months, one in 15 of the homeless population are American veterans, and one in 16 are youth, living on the streets unaccompanied by anyone. Sure, the total number of homeless people may seem small compared to the near 332 million other people living in the country, but in what world is it right for anyone to live in the streets for any reason? This crisis has only become more dire with the current circumstances involving the pandemic inflicting trauma all over the world. One detrimental cause of the virus has been the large spikes of, un of unemployment affecting citizens all over the country. As a result of unemployment, Columbia University professor Dan O'Flaherty states in the Community Solutions blog published on May 11, 2020, homelessness could increase by 45% in just one year. That is an additional 250,000 people left to fend for themselves. Not only are more people experiencing homelessness during the pandemic, but those experiencing homelessness may also be more vulnerable to the virus as well. The 2020 edition of the State of Homelessness, which is a yearly updated report done by nhomelessness.org, has features to show homeless people tend to reflect an age 15 to 20 years older than their actual age in terms of all around health. And it can be seen why this may pose a problem for the 202,623 homeless people currently living over the age of 50. Now, more than ever, is time to take action towards diminishing homelessness in America. But first, it's important to understand how someone may become homeless. It can be hard to feel empathetic for the homeless when many people don't understand how someone ends up homeless in the first place. The Atlanta Mission, an organization formed with the purpose of working to end homelessness, provides a 2021 list of the seven major causes of homelessness. Seventh on the list is personal hardship. Many people may find themselves caught up in a natural disaster, a life-changing situation, a toxic relationship, or even a divorce. Any of these circumstances could flip a person's life upside down in the blink of an eye. Number six is the lack of affordable housing in this country, playing a large factor in our homeless rates. In many places, America's minimum wage of $7.25 just doesn't cut it, even for some of the less inexpensive, more inexpensive housing. Not to mention, thousands of people lose any sort of income they may have altogether, making unemployment number five. Unemployment affects people everywhere. While in some cases, some people may find work, but are still working in poverty, as number four states. So even with a job, people may not make enough to afford housing or food. Moving into the third spot on the list is abuse. This leaves life out on the streets when someone escapes their abuser and in turn has nowhere to go after. Illness and disability are the top two causes of homelessness, as it can be hard to maintain a work life if one is physically unable to do so. Finally, the lack of healthy relationships is the top reason for homelessness. If one cannot maintain a trusting relationship with others, then who can they turn to when they face a situation that leaves them out on the streets? It can be hard to understand how someone becomes homeless if you don't really know how someone lives life on the streets every day. John Chalice, a concerned citizen for the homeless, decided to go out one day in the summer of 2017 and interview some of the homeless community living in Austin, Texas. John first met with Thomas and Charles, two able-bodied men in their 30s when one of them approached John asking for money. 
Thomas had just moved to Austin with his girlfriend, but when their relationship took a bad turn, she kicked him out. Charles had also recently just moved to Austin, but he did so for a job that fell through. Now both men are left without a home. Next, John ran into a homeless woman named Christy, who had been homeless for almost two years at that point. She shared her experiences of being robbed on three different occasions at shelters, but also her excitement for a possible job at a Goodwill. Next, John came across a homeless woman who, according to John, appeared fairly unresponsive to the world around her. She wore rags on her feet instead of shoes, and after trying many ways to break through to her, John was unable to do much more than get her name and buy her a few things from a nearby convenience store. These were only a few of the people John encountered, but every person John met with was facing their own impossible situation. Homelessness is never the fault of the person experiencing it. And being left without a home is sadly a result of many uncontrollable issues, and it's our country's job to help these people get back on their feet after facing such hardships. The scary thing about homelessness is that it can happen to anyone at any given time. People of every ethnicity in America face homelessness, and it's not something you can prepare for or sense coming. Victims of homelessness are not to blame for their circumstances, and ultimately, there are a lot more things our country could be doing in order to help bring an end to homelessness. As addressed by the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness, changes in our country's housing, healthcare, career pathways, crisis response system, foster care education, criminal justice involvement, and preventative measures can all help to lessen the homelessness burden in America. A few examples of these solutions would be to implement more affordable housing or more supportive housing, such as shelters. Other examples would be to implement more access to useful job training, such as those coming out of homelessness, as well as more accessible and attainable health care provided by health and care providers. Along with the many things our country can be doing, there are also a number of things you yourself can do in order to help those in need. Martha's Village, an organization created to help those less fortunate, provides an updated list from 2019, giving many examples of what you, as a citizen of the United States, can do to support the homeless community in America. One key way you can help locally, however, is through donating a cash contribution to shelters and organizations such as Mary's Place for People Serving People located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Or Operation Help, an organization focused on providing resources to those in need in the St. Croix County area, located in Hudson, Wisconsin. Another way you can help is through volunteering. Places to volunteer at would be a local food service, a children's service, a homeless shelter, or a free education center. Sponsoring a food drive in your area or even donating your own clothes are also examples of ways you can help. Even the smallest action done by an individual can make a huge impact on the lives of those in need. Homelessness is a growing issue in America, but it doesn't have to be. Consider the situations that contribute to the factors leaving people without homes and begin to think proactively within your community in order to create positive changes towards minimizing this wide-ranging issue of homelessness in our country. Being homelessness should not be a death sentence. There are so many solutions to the problem, and all it takes is a little action from society and yourself.